Thailand's king has a terrible sense of fashion and enjoys wearing fake tattoos. He's also an insulting authoritarian. A Facebook video went viral a few years ago, revealing why many Thais were worried about Maha Vijatulongkorn, the country's crown prince at the time becoming king. Thailand's Playboy King isn't joking, so keep watching until the end and we'll tell you everything about him. Hello and welcome to yet another amazing video from our channel. In this video, we will discuss the dark truth about the Thai King. But first, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. Let's get this started. The video depicted Vijaro Longkorn, then 64, strolling through a shopping mall in Munich, Germany, where he spent the majority of his time accompanied by his mistress rather than his wife. He was eating ice cream while wearing jeans and a crop top, his bare midriff displaying what appeared to be elaborate temporary tattoos. The king is an inestimable figure in Thai society, a Hindu Buddhist paragon of presumed dignity, virtue, and morality, none of which Vajira Longhorn seemed to exhibit on his stroll through the mall. Many fear that once King Bumibal, Adul Yadej's playboy son, ascended to the throne, the Thai monarchy would devolve into irrelevance. And given its significance as a pillar of Thai nationhood and identity, this could be disastrous in a country already riven by deep divisions and political upheaval. However, things have not gone as planned. Vajira Longhorn has rapidly consolidated power since ascending to the throne in late 2016. He's gotten constitutional changes that give him emergency powers and allow him to exercise his authority even when he's out of the country, which is most of the time. He's taken control of an estimated $43 billion in royal assets that had been entrusted to a Crown Property Bureau for decades, which was supposed to manage the money for the benefit of the Thai people. He's arranged for army units to report directly to him. Vajira Longkorn's assertion of power comes at a time when Thailand has been moving toward authoritarianism, with a government largely controlled by the military, which took power in a coup in 2014 after years of sometimes violent political turmoil. A new constitution drafted the coup leaders allowed for an election in March 2019, but the new law gives the military so many automatic seats in parliament that an opposition party would be almost impossible to take control of. The Thai military government has always used the monarchy as a tool of political control and has cultivated a very monarchical image for the new king. The man once known for his mistresses, crop tops and presumably fake tattoos now stands sternly in kingly gold brocaded robes or a trim white jacket with epaulets, a yellow sash, and a sword from portraits all over Thailand. Vajira Longhorn is still an absentee monarch, spending most of his time in Europe, but that doesn't mean he's uninvolved in domestic politics. He has clearly taken command, and he has done so in a way that implies both obedience to authority and a kind of above-the-law monarchical privilege. I thought Thailand would end up with a weak king. Pavin Chachaval Pong Pun, a Thai political scholar and dissident exiled from the country, when Vajilong Korn's father was still king, told me via Skype from Japan. I assumed that Vajilong Korn would be so lacking in moral authority that he would not receive the necessary support from the various sectors of society. However, I was mistaken. Chacha Valpong Poon continued, He basically runs the country now, though not through moral authority like his father did. He's using fear to cement his position and seize command. The incident that has garnered the most attention in the new king's reign thus far involves the woman walking next to Vajira Longhorn in that shopping mall video, Sininat Wong Vajira Pakti, a former nurse. Following his ascension to the throne, Vajira Longhorn appointed her as noble royal consort, implying that she would be a kind of official concubine. The king's second female companion, in addition to his actual wife, his fourth. In a country where polygamy has been illegal for 100 years, the king appeared to be implying that a form of polygamy would be the monarch's prerogative and nobody else's. But then something strange happened. Three months later, Sininat was accused of ingratitude and misbehavior and stripped of her rank and titles, as if to demonstrate the dangers of gaining the king's disfavor. And then she vanished. The widely held belief in Bangkok is that she was imprisoned in the Bangkok women's prison. Nobody knows in what legal authority she was imprisoned other than the king's demand. Around the same time, two palace aides identified as bedroom guards were fired for inappropriate acts of adultery, according to the official Palace Gazette. Many Thais were aware that the king had five children, with a now-dismissed mistress while still married to his second wife. That mistress and four of the five children have since been disowned and are now living in the United States. The youngest child and only daughter lives in Thailand as a royal. But in a way, that was the point. Vajira Longhorn, like President Trump, gets away with things that would have brought down his predecessors. Though in Vajira Longhorn's case, this involves an intentional display of royal power, 
a signal that the rules that apply to everyone else don't apply to him. It is difficult to overstate the extent of Thailand's almost medieval reverence for the king. Even the most senior government and military officials literally fall to their knees in his presence. Official photographs of Sininat's installation as noble royal consort showed her lying on the floor making fealty hand gestures, while Vajiralong Korn sat imperiously on a gilded throne above her. The country's lacy majesty laws, which prohibited defaming, insulting, or threatening a member of the royal family, including, for example, liking that mall video on Facebook, have long enforced the country's reverence for the king. According to Human Rights Watch, at least 68 people have been arrested or imprisoned under these laws since the 2014 military coup. According to newspaper reports, Vajita Longcorn has ordered an end to prosecutions under the Lacey Majesty laws in an apparent concession to modern sensibilities. However, human rights organizations claim that similar prosecutions are taking place under the country's computer crime laws. Nobody wants to be heard saying anything negative or disparaging about Vajita Longcorn. Thailand is a country where people can have lively discussions about a wide range of topics and where new political parties have formed in order to vigorously contest the national elections held in March of last year. When the subject shifts to the king, most people either fall silent or, if they do speak, look around cautiously to ensure no one else is listening. We're not supposed to talk about the king, someone said to me in Bangkok during a November visit, but the king is what everyone talks about. A stunning display of unrestricted power, installing his mistress as a royal consort, was certainly scandalous, but some of the measures Vajira Longkorn has taken to assert his power go far beyond nefarious palace intrigue and into territory and chartered for Thailand. Among them is his removal of two crack army regiments in the Bangkok area from the usual chain of command and placing them under his own authority. It effectively gives him a command of his own private army. Thai sources say his army is outfitted with armored personal carriers, anti-riot gear, and helicopters. A private army would be extremely useful in the event of a coup attempt, including a move against him by a dissenting faction within the army. In perhaps his most remarkable display of unrestricted power, but Longkorn simply rewrote the clauses dealing with the king's power after a few constitution was adopted in a referendum. In one of them, for example, he removed a requirement that when the king is absent from the country, as Vajir Longkorn is most of the time, the king's authority be transferred to a region. Thailand no longer has such a region. He's also launched a massive construction campaign in Bangkok's central Dusit district, where the monarchy owns real estate that dwarfs the British royal family's compounds. This had included a closure of previously open to the public areas, such as the Bangkok Zoo and one of the city's two horse racing tracks. It's a massive rectangle surrounded by newly renovated walls and topped by the monarchy's yellow flag. Soldiers patrol the nearby sidewalks. Over the ramparts, construction cranes loom. A row of large buildings that once housed senior members of the palace staff are empty and decaying in one area and are reportedly slated for demolition. The gates to the old zoo have been locked. A peek inside the old race track revealed a slew of construction sheds, plaques commemorating the 1932 coup that deposed the absolute monarchy, according to some Bangkok residents, have simply vanished. It's all a way of formalizing and making his power visible, one person said to me. He wants everyone to see whether it's reclaiming the zoo's land or taking direct control of military regiments, and no one can or will dare to stop him. If there is widespread public opposition, all of this would be far more difficult, if not impossible. But it appears that there is a very little of that in Thailand these days. This is due in part to the military-led government's deft use of repressive measures, such as the disappearances and apparent killings of at least eight leading opposition figures, as well as police surveillance of others suspected of causing trouble. Thailand is a country where journalists, civic activists, lawyers, and others are summoned to a military base for attitude adjustment to use a well-known euphemism. Some people have gone to jail. Serapop Kornarut, also known as Rangsila, a dissident poet recently released from detention after five years, told me that's how they maintain control. That's how they got people to give up. However, as Rangsila and others acknowledge, Thailand's shift to authoritarianism has been welcomed and supported by many people who lived through the intermittent turbulence and violence of the years preceding the 2014 coup and credit the military and monarchy for the restoration of domestic peace and order, as propaganda put it at the time. In this sense, Vajira Longkorn arrives at a time of disillusionment with traditional politics. And that's all we have for now. Thank you for your time. What are your thoughts on the matter? Please leave your feedback in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.